Young are wanted who will resist the tide of worldliness and lift a voice. Do what? They won't be quiet about it. They're going to lift a voice against the uh, a voice of warning against taking the first steps in immorality and vice, but it says before the young can wail that type of power, they must first consecrate their hearts to Jesus. And let me tell you something. I'm going to give you a little secret. There are only going to be young people that finish the work. Did you hear what I said? Those who finish the work and prepare the way for the coming of Jesus are going to be 100% youth. Somebody says, well, I'm in trouble. I'm too old. No, no. Youth doesn't have to be just age. The Bible says that there are some things that you can eat that can renew your youth. You better come to the health reform classes. Bible says there's some things that you can do that can renew your energy and your strength. My brothers and sisters, even a man could be 100 years old, but if he's following God's plan, he's a youth. Only the youth are going to finish the work, and the way you know it, if you are seeing problems in the church and you settle down with it, you're too old. Your stakes are too deep. If you see a problem in your home, in your life, if you see the world coming to an end, and yet we're doing nothing to prepare, then that means you're too old and some youth has to be restored. It's time to wake up. What do you say? But I don't care what your age is. If you see that there's a need of getting this blood-stained banner up to before the world, the distinctive message God has given us, if you recognize what must be done to finish the work and you will put your power and your time and your energy in getting a world and a church ready, that means you're a young person. God is going to have an army of youth. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible says in 1 John, what book did I say? 1 John, just before the book of Revelation. A few bit before the book of Revelation in 1 John chapter 2, the Bible tells us what it is. God has given our young people something very significant. And this is what must be used to finish the work. And the devil, that mastermind, that satanic mastermind, understands the value of this youth. I mean, you think of it. From Genesis to Revelation, God has always used young people. Am I right or wrong? Think about it. When God needed somebody to stand in the pagan courts of Egypt, God rose up the young Joseph who stood against the idolatry of all of Egypt and became a savior to his own people. When God needed somebody to stand, when the children of Israel began to clamor for a king to be like the surrounding nations, God chose the young Saul. But when he apostatized, God looked over all the aged sons of Jesse, and he chose not the oldest. You know who he chose? He chose the youngest son, David. When God needed somebody to stand in the pagan courts of Babylon against the Babylonian music, against the Babylonian diet, against the Babylonian way of life, he rose up Daniel and the three Hebrew worthies. When God needed somebody to stand in the east, in the kingdoms of India and Persia, he rose up a young sister by the name of Esther. Who said, if I perish, I perish. Where are those young men and those young women today? I believe some of them are in this church right now, waiting to hear this distinctive message. I believe some of them are watching on the internet, waiting to hear the call, and God is calling you and I tonight, today. My brothers and sisters, we don't have long. What has God given us? First John chapter 2, beginning in verse 14. And when you get there, let me know by saying amen. 1 John 2, beginning in verse 14. Let's read it together. The Bible says, in 1 John 2, verse 14, it says, I have what? I have written to you, fathers, because you have known that which is from the beginning. I have written unto you what? Now, notice now, I want you to understand the principle. Why did God write to the young? Hear the young man. But why did God write to the young? Notice what it says. It says, I have written to young men because you are what? strong and the word of God abideth in you and you have overcome the wicked one. In other words, the Bible says that there's something in the youth that has a strength or an energy. There is a power inside of the youth that if rightly directed can motivate and change the world. Am I right or wrong? You know what the devil says? I've got to take control of that power because if I do, I can control the world for me. And the devil, you know what he does? The devil has int introduced a strange thought into the mind of the adults. He says the children are too young for religion. The children are too young for the Bible. And it's the devil that inspired it. You know why? Because the devil never thinks that a child is too young for him. 
That devil, will, that devil will make a program for a child that's not even two or three years old. There are children right now that cannot read or write, but they can quote rap songs and rock songs and worldly songs. Every time that you have a problem with your technology, you don't go to the man who is so old. You know who you go to. You have a problem with your cell phone, you don't know how to work it. You have a problem with your DVD player, you don't know how to work it. You have a problem with your computer, you don't know how you work it. You know you go to, you go to the young person. And then you say, he's too young to understand. It's a trick of the devil. Because the devil says, the younger they are, the better. And the devil has turned this world upside down with young people that are controlled by the devil. When a young man gives his heart to Jesus... When a young man sees the beauty of the cross, when he understands the joy of the value that Jesus did something for us, I mean, think, if we only start thinking, we will stop working for the devil. My question is, what has the devil done for you to make you so loyal to him? What has the devil done to us to make us so loyal where we will wear the devil's clothes? We will listen to the devil's music. We will eat the devil's food. We will go to the devil's places of entertainment, and the devil has done nothing for us. But Jesus has given his life on Calvary. He died. He suffered. He bled. He bought us with a price, and instead of giving everything to Jesus, we're giving everything to the devil. What has the devil done to us to make us so loyal to him? My brothers and sisters, we're in a time today where the devil has caused the Seven of his church, the young people in this church, to have something called spiritual amnesia. You know what amnesia is? A man that has amnesia is sick. You know what his problem is? He's forgot who he is. You know what our problem is as a church and especially as adults as a result? It has trickled down to the young generation. As a church, we have forgotten who we are. And listen, if a man has amnesia, he could be the richest man in the world and live like a pauper. You know, there have been stories where people have, have been gone out to the bank and they forgot who they were. God forgot their bank account. They had to beg and become poor because they have forgotten their own identity and now everything they have means nothing. Do you know that seven day Adventists are the richest people in this world? We have the greatest wealth of truth ever given to mortals, but the devil has made us forget who we are and what we are. And as a result, the devil has taken what we had and made us look like we're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. The devil has robbed us. And when you don't know who you are, you don't know how to live. You see, when a man forgets who he is, he might start dressing like a woman. When a woman forgets who she is, she might start dressing like a man. When a person forgets who they are, they might start eating what they shouldn't eat. When a person forgets who they are, everything about them changes. They have an identity problem. And our problem today is that we have an identity problem, spiritual amnesia. And God is saying, who will show the young generation who they are? Who will train them up in the way they should go? You see, young people, God has given you something in this church that if you know what it is, you will become wondered at and the world wants to know this message. You know, the world is dying for what God has given us tonight. But we don't have long to find out who we are. You see, when a man doesn't know who he is, he lets the world define for him everything he does. Can you imagine right now we have a generation that know more about Jay-Z than they know about Jesus? We have a generation today that are watching more Facebook than in putting their face in this book. We have a generation today that have lost a sense of the value of a relationship with Christ. And when a man loses that, he lets the world define for him how to dress. He lets the world define for him what is education. He lets the world define for him what a marriage looks like. And the world can't tell you what a marriage looks like. Its rates are terrible. The world doesn't know how to make heaven on earth. The world doesn't know, but we let the world define for us everything about us. But the moment we know who we are, we can run back to the Father, and Jesus, my friends, can give us heaven on earth. What do you say? But one of the first things that must take place is that God must wake us up. What do you say? Let me tell you what the devil has done. Listen to me, young people. Listen to me, adults. The devil, could you help me out again? The devil has given something that I have entitled a sleeping pill to the church. 
You know, we know what happens when a man, he takes a sleeping pill. You know what happens to him? What happens? That man takes that sleeping pill, and no matter what he does, it puts him into a state of sleep. Now, look at this now. What do you think that is right there? Talk to me. What do you think that is? Now, now even a child can know what that is. Am I right or wrong? You know, you know what, what is that, sister? That's right. It's a sleeping pill. Is that right? That's a sleeping pill. And the devil has given it to the church Right now in the day, the whole church are getting sleeping pills from the pulpit. They're getting sleeping pills from the press. They're getting sleeping pills from society, from the news. They're getting sleeping pills, and we're just swallowing in and wondering why we don't wake up. But let me tell you something. God wants to wake us up. Look at what this says. Look what the prophet says is going to wake us up from the sleeping pill. In the book, Testimonies to Ministers, page 118. Write it down. Look what it says. Let's read it together. What does it say? It says what? The perils of the what? Last days are upon us. Did we see that from the Bible? This know also that in the last days that perilous times shall come. It says the perils of the last days are what? Upon us. And in our work we are to do what? Warn the people of the danger what? Not the danger that's coming, but the danger what? That they are in. Listen to me tonight. Listen to me. You are in danger in Silver Springs, Maryland. We're going to show you today and tomorrow you're in danger, brothers and sisters. And God says, warn the people of the danger they're in. We're getting sleeping pills telling us it's all right. The world is getting better. You think the world is getting better? Our politicians are telling us, vote for me, you put me in office, and I'm going to make the world a better place. And man thought he was getting hope. When he got, he got slipped something else. And I don't care who you vote for. No man can bring us to the top. I remember someplace, man said, that's right. I didn't vote for Obama. I voted for Mitt Romney. If you voted for Mitt Romney, you're in a terrible position. If you voted for Obama, you're in a terrible position. You know why? Because there's only one person to vote for. His name is Jesus. Amen. Now, my brothers and sisters, do you understand? That the politicians are telling us it's going to be all right. The religious leaders are hailing the coming of this new pope. The world is being brainwashed and they're looking and saying everything is getting better. We're moving toward a time of peace and prosperity. But the Bible does not teach that it's getting ready to get better. Bible says in the last days evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. You know, we're told that we're getting ready to see a time of trouble such as the world has never witnessed. And the only reason why God has not allowed it to take place is because he knows that if he were to allow it right now, the majority of seven-day Adventists, we would not be ready. He looks at our young people who are hooked on the sports of this world and the things of this world, and he sees them and saying, how can they draw close to me when they don't spend any time with Jesus? I'll never forget, we were doing some meetings in New York not long ago, and a Super Bowl that took place. We went into one of the stores, and while we was in there, we were buying some things in one of these health food stores, and a man at the front, young man, he started talking to me, and he said to me, did you watch the Super Bowl? Now, he was asking the wrong man. I didn't even know they were playing the Super Bowl. And he said, uh, did you watch the Super Bowl? I said, no, and I left it at that. I was just talking about some other things, and but he got, he got questioned. He said, no, well, why didn't you watch? Now, it's, it's dangerous to ask the question. Sometimes I'm going I'm to make it plain. Amen. <laughs> it was dangerous. So he said, he said, why are you not, why, why didn't you watch the Super Bowl? I said, well, I didn't tell you, but since you asked me, I'll tell you why. I said to him, I have better things to do with my time than to watch a man with tights run up and down the field. <laughs> the man said, well, since you put it that way, I agree with you. I mean, you have to be insane to want to pay money to watch men in tights. But this is what it is. And when you start thinking for yourself, when you start listening for yourself and thinking for yourself, you begin to see how foolish the devil has made us. That we will spend money and watch hours, men running back and forth, pigskins up and down the field, and we get excitement through that. We get entertainment through that. We see men running up and down the court, throwing a ball into a circle, and we're jumping up and down. Come now, let's reason together, brothers and sisters. Are we teaching the truth in love? Telling it like it is. Are we holding?
holding pure motives, showing that we care. Are we teaching the truth?